Regular public meeting of the Henry County Board of Commissioners for 9 a.m. Monday, June 20th, 2011. At this time, I'd like to call the meeting to order and ask for an acceptance of the agenda. So moved, Madam Chair. Motion by Mr. Stamey and a second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. The first item on the agenda this morning is juvenile court. We have a resolution requesting authorization to accept a grant from the Council of Juvenile Court Judges of Georgia. Our presenter is Judge William P. Bartles, Juvenile Court Judge, Exhibit Number 1. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners, Chairman. <coughs> appreciate the opportunity to come speak to you. Judge Welch is here as well. And on behalf of the juvenile court, we're asking to get permission to accept $2,500 from the Council of Juvenile Court Judges, which is a grant that we've been participating with for, I know at least, I've gotten records back for at least 13 years where the county has received for the juvenile court and for our children that we deal with in delinquent and unruly cases, almost $250,000 since 1997. We were awarded um, $7,500 earlier this fiscal year, which you allowed us to accept, and we got a supplement of $5,000, and this is the last supplement where we'll be, we will be able to get for this fiscal year that on their fiscal year ends September 30th, which will have given us a total of $15,000. What we use that for is to pay for psychological evaluations for kids who come to our court on unruly or delinquent charges and we see something going on that we think needs a professional to look at and give them a full, thorough evaluation of a psychological nature and give us some ideas how we can help him and or his family or her and or her family. And that's what very beneficial to us, to Judge Welch and I and Judge Brown, in helping devise a way to rehabilitate and treat these kids that we see. There is no match from the county. There's no money. The only thing that's involved is this is a reimbursement grant. So when we get the money, we expend, we typically pay anywhere from 150 to four or $500 for these evaluations, depending on which provider and what, how detailed an assessment we need. And then we submit a bill on a monthly basis to the Council of Juvenile Court Judges in Atlanta, and they pay us back dollar for dollar up to the top that we can spend. Right now, we have about $8,000 still on account, including this 2500 that we're asking for today, and that will get us through September 30th. And quite honestly, that does not cover all the kids that we do. Sometimes we have kids who are eligible for Medicaid, and we'll let Medicaid do the paying if they have private insurance. But this is a huge help for us, and uh, we appreciate all the years you've allowed us to participate in this program. The funds actually come from a combination of federal and state money that's monitored and managed by the council of uh, children and families in Atlanta. And then the Council of Juvenile Court Judges gets an award from them and in turn divvies this out to all 159 counties that wish to participate. Unfortunately, all the counties don't participate and that's why there's supplemental money available that did not get used and so they make it available to the ones who have been using it. If I'd be glad to answer any questions if you have about it. Does any board member have a question pertaining to this item? If not, you have before you a resolution authorizing the acceptance of the grant, and I will entertain a motion. Motion by Mr. Arletta and a second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Moving on to social services, the first item is a resolution requesting approval of the third amendment to the Atlanta Regional Commission contract for fiscal year 2011. Our presenter is Susan Craig, Director of Senior Services, Exhibit Number 2. Good morning. Good morning. This is our third and final um, amendment to our ARC contract for this year. Uh, they are allotting us $6,922 additional to our contract. Uh, I'm seeking authorization for the chairman to sign the papers necessary for us to, to accept these funds. Does any board member have a question or comment pertaining to this item? If not, you have before you a resolution of the Board of Commissioners accepting the third amendment to the ARC Commission contract for our senior services, and I will entertain a motion. Motion by Mr. Stamey, second by Mr. Alletta. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. The next item, thank you, Susan. The next item is a resolution requesting approval of an operating grant for connecting Henry from the Georgia Department of Human Resources. Our presenter is Angela Craig, Chairman, and that's Exhibit Number 3. Good morning. Good morning. We are seeking authorization to, um, to get permission to 
get the $44,000 grant from the Family Connections Project, which we have gotten for approximately the past 10 years. Does any board member have a question pertaining to this item? I think we're all very familiar with that there's no matching grant involved, no match required for this grant. And if there are no questions, you have a resolution before you um, approving the request. Move to approve. Motion by Mr. Stamey. Second. Second by Mr. Holder. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Thank, Thank you. you. Moving on to SPLOS, the first item is a resolution requesting approval of a deed of conveyance and easement between Henry County and the Henry County Water and Sewerage Authority for the Haven House. Our presenter is Ron Burkhalter, Capital Projects Director, Exhibit Number 4. Good morning. Chairman, Commissioners, good morning. It's necessary to approve a deed of conveyance and easement for the commercial fire line meter, easement for the sewer, contribution to fixed assets, limited warranty, and owner's affidavit between Henry County and the Henry County Water and Sewer Authority for the Haven House. The county attorney has reviewed the agreement and found no legal issues. There's no cost to Henry County involved in the agreement once the agreement is signed. However, in the fixed assets, uh, the county is making a contribution of $85,331 for the water and sewer lines. Does any board member have a question or comment pertaining to this item? Mr. Holder? Um, Ron, the, the fair market value of the easement, and that's a 10-foot easement, is that correct? That's correct. It's $37,760. Does this go into the exchange of services fund where the county and the water authority and the boards of education, the different government entities swap uh, amounts of service and it kind of goes into a pool so that cash does not exchange hands when you're dealing with taxpayer money to begin with? It will? Yes. Okay. And, and Commissioner, just for you, this, there's more than just the easement. There's the, the pipe, the material, the manholes. Uh, this is this is the assets themselves, the physical line itself. I understand, but the value, the thirty-seven thousand dollar value, is that the value of the easement itself? No, sir. That's the that's the fixed assets. That's for the the water, the physical pipe itself, and manholes, sewer, PVC pipe, and ductile iron pipe. Okay. Commissioner, we don't have a value on the easement itself in the agreement. Um, just a thought, I think it might be good that we had some value placed there because in the past, you know, there have, there have been debates on who, who owes who for various projects. So if we don't have an established value on that easement, then we're not going to get anything. We don't get any credit, for lack of a better term. understand. Yes, sir. Any other questions? Mr. Oletta? Uh, are these uh, monies have already been expended through SPLOST and already been reduced out of the amount of money that's available for the Haven House in the SPLOST budget? Yes, sir. So these are actual cash expenditures that have been made. Thank you. LaTanya, well, if, if indeed, as Commissioner Holder has stated, we need to have a value assigned to all of, of it, including the easement itself, is this something that we should table and bring back until we can put the value in with the exhibit? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Any other questions or comments? If not, um, if it pleases the board, if we could have a motion to table this item until that amount can be um, assessed and included in with this paperwork. I, I, will, I will move that motion, but before I do, I know the, the value of this easement or the actual ground is may be insignificant in the total of this, but if we don't document that, we'll never get credit for it in, in, in the exchange of services agreement. So that is that's the reason for that and I will move to take. I have a motion by Mr. Holder and a second by Mr. Bowman. All in favor? Motion carries five zero. Thank you. Thank you. The next item is a resolution requesting approval of a payment agreement with Central Georgia EMC for the Harris Drive at State Route 42 Transportation Project. Presenter is Rocky Romero, Squaws Transportation Project Director, Exhibit Number 5. Good morning. 
before we start, I, will, I want to recuse myself from this particular discussion because I am a member of the uh, Board of Directors of Central Georgia EMC. Thank you, Mr. Holden. Good morning, Madam Good morning. Chair and board members. Uh, Harris Drive at State Route 42 is a designated SPLOS 3 transportation project. Uh, Georgia Department of Transportation and Henry County entered into a project framework agreement last year with a resolution that was passed by the board, Resolution 10-230, uh, where Henry County is responsible for utility relocation. Uh, due, to, due to the construction of this project, it will be necessary for Central Georgia AMC to relocate a portion of the, its distribution facilities a payment agreement between Henry County and Georgia EMC, Central Georgia EMC, is needed. Uh, funding uh, for this project is uh, available, uh, and the cost to do this relocation is $34,800. I'll take any, any questions. Does any board member have a question or comment? Madam Chair, I have a question. Mr. Stamey? Rocky, this project was, uh, was a project was awarded some money many years ago, four or five years ago, from the federal government, and I think it was to the tune of 600000 minus 20 percent match, 480, correct? Correct, and of course every every year went by, the money kept going lower and lower, but uh, it's already out, out for bid, or already uh, bid out. Uh, payment construction got the low bid. Uh, the county on the PFA that it was, or the project framework agreement that it was voted passed last year, the county was responsible for portion of the design, all the utilities, and a portion of construction, the 20% match, which we already paid. We already paid GDA for for the part of the design and also for the for the construction. So that, that money has has been paid. Uh, the next step before they can start construction after clearing, they have to relocate the utilities, and that's that's what we're here for. Um, I think on the on the regional. When the board passed the previous agreement or resolution, the the wording of utility was not included on the on the resolution, but the inside of the Georgia DOT uh, agreement, it did mention all 100% utilities to be responsible, Henry County. Okay. So that's that's why we're here, just to make it clear that that we are responsible and that we do have the money to to pay for this. Okay. Are there any additional questions? If not, you have a resolution before you to approve a payment agreement between Henry County and Central Georgia EMC, and I will entertain a motion. Motion by Mr. Bowman, second by Mr. Auletta. All in favor? Motion carries 401 with Commissioner uh, Holder abstaining from the vote. The next item is a resolution requesting approval of a utility easement agreement with Georgia Transmission Corporation for the Rock Quarry Road Transportation Project, and that's exhibit number six. Yes, uh, Rock Quarry Road is a designated SPOS 3 transportation project. Due to the construction of this project, it will be necessary for Georgia Transmission Corporation to make certain adjustments to their existing facilities. The Georgia Transmission Corporation relocation will require permanent easement from county property. This property is located where the new fire station has been built. Georgia Transmission Corporation shall pay Henry County a fair market value of $4,360 for said utility easement, which is shown on the attached plat if you, if you have a copy of it. Uh, SPLUS recommend approval of the attached utility easement agreement between Georgia Transmission Corporation and Henry County. I'll take any questions. Does any board member have a question or comment? Mr. Bowman? Rocky, when uh, you know when we're having to purchase easements, uh, is this in line with what our norm? Was it appraised? Was it? It, it, it was. It, it is in line with our our data book, uh, and of course, just like utility easements, we pay fifty percent. So we looked at the data book at the range values and of the square footage per right away, we multiply that by 50 percent, and that's, that's where the number came from. Okay. That's all right. So it's roughly a dollar per, per, per square foot. Are there any other questions? If not, Mr. Bowman, this lies in your district, and I'll entertain a motion to approve the utility easement agreement. Move to approve, Madam Chair. have a motion by Mr. Bowman to approve it, a second by Mr. Stamey. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Thank, Thank you. you. Moving on to public safety. 
The first item is a resolution requesting authorization to use seized asset and forfeiture account funds to cover the equitable sharing expenses of seized property. Our presenter is Major Jason Bolton of the Police Department, Exhibit Number 7. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. The Police Department has an officer assigned to a DEA task force group out of Atlanta, and towards the end of 2010, two vehicles were seized as a result of investigations conducted by this DEA task force group. These two vehicles have been awarded to the Police Department. However, there is a federal sharing fee that is associated with these vehicles that uh, we are required to pay before taking possession of the vehicles. Uh, the first vehicle has a sharing fee of $2,506 and the second is $1,616. These two vehicles, the first one actually has a blue book value of $17,500 with the second vehicle valuing it $9,750. The police department is requesting to use funds from the seized assets and forfeiture account to pay for these federal sharing fees so that we can take possession of these vehicles. So basically, the feds don't want to wait for their money. They want you to go ahead and pay them, and then when you sell the vehicle and dispose of it, then the remainder of those funds will go back into your seized forfeiture account. Yes, ma'am, that is correct. Are there any questions or comments pertaining to this item? Mr. Arletta? <coughs> yes, I mentioned sale. Are these uh, vehicles up for sale or going to be up for sale? I believe it has not yet been decided on whether or not we will actually use these vehicles perhaps for a while in an undercover capacity before actually selling them. Um, I don't believe that's actually been decided on yet, but we have the option of actually using the vehicles uh, in an undercover capacity or we can hang on to them and then sell them after a period of time. Are there any additional questions or comments? If not, you have a resolution before you authorizing the expenditure from seized asset and forfeiture account for the related seizure expense, expenses, and I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve by Mr. Bowman, second by Mr. Holder. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next item is a resolution requesting award of a bid for fire turnout gear. Our presenter is Chief Brad Johnson of the Fire Department, Exhibit Number 8. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair, Commissioners. This is our annual Protect the Gear contract that we, we renew annually. The bid package is sent out through purchasing through county policy. This package included firefighting jackets, firefighting trousers, helmets, gloves, hood, rubber boots, firefighting leather boots, and suspenders. It's our recommendation that the firefighting jacket, trousers, hood, leather boots, and suspenders go to NAFCO, the helmet, gloves, and rubber boots go to Bennett Fire as a lower bid. Does any board member have a question or comment pertaining to this item? If not, you have before you a resolution awarding a split bid for the purchase of the firefighter turnout gear, and I will entertain a motion. Motion to approve by Mr. Holmes, second by Mr. Auletta. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. The final item under public safety is a resolution requesting authorization to accept grant funds from the Federal Emergency Management Agency for an emergency sirens and reverse notification capabilities. Our presenter is Don Ash, Emergency Management Agency Director, <coughs> Exhibit Number 9. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, this grant is actually a reference to an earmark that um, the commissioners seek through Con Congressman David Scott. The way the funds came down, they came down as a hazardous mitigation program, and we're looking to move forward with that project. The project will work in two phases. The first phase being mo most importantly, I believe, for our citizens is the reverse notification por portion of it. And then the second phase will be the early warning sirens. We're looking to um, have the documents signed to move forward with this project. And Don, explain a little bit to um, those who are at home and may be viewing this what the reverse notification will actually do for the residents of Henry County. Absolutely. Um, I was actually privileged to have to see it work firsthand um, in Maryland. And what happens is that, well, let me say first that um, tornado sirens, a lot of times there's a misconception. They're really designed for outside warning. That's the primary goal of an early warning siren. What will happen with a reverse notification system when our county is issued a tornado warning, our citizens can register their home phone and their cell phone and we'll send a warning directly to them and I had an opportunity to see that work and that's a way to get advance warning. Um, a lot of times when these storms hit they're doing the middle of the night when the TV is off or if you don't 
have a NOAA radio, this would provide instant notification to you. Thank you. Uh, one thing I left out, I'm sorry, I meant to mention that the grant is for $275,000. The grant, the county matches 91667, which would come to a total project of $366,667. Does any board member have a question or comment pertaining to this item? I have one, Don, what is the cost of one of those sirens? Um, we'll go through the normal purchasing project um, process. I spoke with Fayette County. They recently purchased some, and they came in right at about $25,000 per $25,000 per siren. And I think you made a, a valid point earlier when you said storms, and the storms that we've had this year have occurred in the evening after, or after, early after mornings or when people were asleep. Or you, you couldn't, in a house, you may not hear the siren absolutely but with the reverse notification to me that we're that, headed in the right direction on notifying people that that there is a problem there's a, a tornado warning and so many people don't have weather radios to be alerted so i think this is great a, a added benefit um on the notification system if you're traveling with your family and you're out and about in our county and storms come in regardless of where you're at you're going to get that warning as well I know my daughter is a student out at West Georgia, and so she she has our home phone as a contact as well as her cell phone, so we know what's going on with her even though she's away from home, and it's we appreciate having that information. A secondary benefit of this reverse notification is, um, I'll give you an example, in, um, in the Hampton area, um, in the event we have a chemical spill, over by Kit Chemicals, an area that was a, traditionally not a residential area. Now we have a lot of population around that facility. We could take this system, get with our fire and emergency services, and develop a plume line to give notification to those specific residents in that area. So there's some additional benefits to this type of system. Mr. Alletta? How are you going to uh, get the word out to the community to make sure that everybody's aware of this once it's in place? We'll use our, utilize our communications um, department. We'll do a public education campaign. And, and more and more we see emergency management agencies look into social medias to get information out. We've had some communications about the use of Facebook and possibly some Twitter to get the information out to the community. I up. I just, uh, obviously it sounds like a great program. We just I need to make sure we get the full utilization of it, which is what I know you'll do. Thank you. Are there any additional questions? If not, you have before you a resolution authorizing the acceptance of the FEMA grant, and I'll entertain a motion. Move to motion by Mr. Stamey, second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Thank, Thank you. you. Next on the agenda, planning and zoning services, we have a resolution requesting approval of an amendment to the current service delivery strategy agreement between Henry County and the City of Hampton. Our presenter is Michael Harris, Planning and Zoning Services Division Director, Exhibit Number 10. Good morning. Good morning. We currently operate under a service delivery strategy between the county and all our respective cities. Um, the current agreement was um, in, has been in place since uh, December 24, 2009. Um, late last year, on December 29, 2010, the City of Hampton sent a letter to the city indicating that they would like to resume certain services within the City of Hampton. Um, that letter was sent in accordance with the provisions as outlined in our agreement. Um, those services include building permits, inspections, and impact fees, code enforcement, development plan review, soil erosion, erosion control inspections, and stormwater management. Um, this amendment for them to take on these services would go into effect on July 1st with the understanding that there is a separate provision regarding um, rollback, millage rollback. However, because of the timing of the, of the resolution, <clears throat> that provision would not go into effect until January 1st of 2012. Um, we reviewed the letter and made sure it was in accordance with the provisions as outlined in the agreement. Our county attorney has reviewed it. And we also have members here from City of Hampton, uh, City Manager Andy Pippen, as well as Councilman Arley Lowe, if you have any specific questions for them. Does any board member have a question or comment pertaining to this item? Mr. Bowman? I have a question, and really it, it, it pertains to this item, but it pertains to the city of Stockbridge and not Hampton. And, mm -hmm. and 
it, like the stormwater management, the city of Stockbridge collects their own, correct. correct? Yes. So anything that has any correlation to stormwater management within the city of Stockbridge should be covered under their stormwater management. Is that correct? That's correct. Because okay. their citizens are paying whatever fee they've set within their jurisdiction to provide those services. Okay. That that's and, and seeing this on Hamptons is is that's good because there's a lot of issues on mm -hmm. on I know on our end of the county with some stormwater issues that the city's been collecting for quite a while and and uh, for some reason there's 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 a little push back there mm -hmm. you know whose responsibility it actually is so when Hampton when they take on this responsibility then Henry County's responsibility and I'm, I'm speaking specifically to stormwater management right it, it'll be up to the city of Hampton to when they have an issue when inside the city then they'll have to handle that issue with the funds that they've received from their citizens that's correct okay that's all any other questions or comments? Mr. Alletta? Having uh, just gone through the budget, and uh, was there any income associated with this agreement prior to now the change? You know, permitting fees that were associated with on the building side, and, and those were, as you have seen, you know, the, the decrease in our permitting revenues that have come in, and on a much, much smaller scale in the city of Hampton, very, very minor. So I don't have the exact number, but I can tell you it was, it was a, it was a so, so there weren't a lot of revenues going in for based on the expenditures that were being utilized and the inspection so, services. So the budget is approved, but the costs that were associated or revenues anticipated That's correct. related to this have all been taken care That's of. That's correct. That was, taken into, that was taken into account when the budget was done. Okay. Thank you. And Ms. Wiley, I believe you had a question or comment. I think it's important to note for, for full clarification, the county is retaining um, managing and handling the planning and zoning services for the city of Hampton. Um, when we enter into the service delivery strategy agreement with these five items being taken over by the county, um, that was in addition to the planning and zoning services. So that's the only service that the county will continue to um, perform on behalf of the city of Hampton under the service and delivery strategy agreement. With that in mind, the rollback provision that is noted in the um, resolution, the formula will have to be uh, amended and our finance director will work with that in order to account for the fact that the county is continuing to provide uh, the planning and zoning services so the city would not be entitled to the full ro rollback um, provision effective January 1, 2012. So maybe we need to put that caveat in our agreement because we do have costs from the county side of providing that service. Would that need to be done before we approve this item today? No, I think we could just uh, amend the resolution to reflect right. that the county will continue to provide uh, planning and zoning services to the city of Hampton, and any rollback reduction uh, will, take, uh, will need to be amended to take into account that service. That's fine. I can make that amendment before it comes back to the board for signatures. Any other questions or comments? If not, you have before you a resolution amending the service delivery strategy agreement with the City of Hampton with the words inserted that uh, the county uh, attorney has just referenced, and I will entertain a motion on that. Motion to approve by Mr. Arletta, second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Thank, Thank you. you. Moving on to financial services, a resolution requesting approval of the policies and procedure manual for the Neighborhood Stabilization Program 3. Our presenter, Mike Bush, Finance Director, Exhibit Number 11. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair and Board Members. We came before you a few months ago and updated our policies and procedures manual for that NSP1 program that we have. And, and, and getting started with the uh, asset managers and inspectors and appraisers that we did for NSP 1 and 3, we realized that the policy manual is only applicable to, to NSP 1, so we need to also adopt a policy manual for NSP 3. The difference between 1 and 3 is NSP 1, we deal straight with the Department of Community Affairs at the state of Georgia, and NSP 3, we deal with the housing and urban development at, at the federal level. So everywhere you see DCA in the original policies and procedures manual now will say HUD 
and any other changes that were federal versus state have been made. So it's it's just basically changing titles and adopting a policy manual for NSP3. Does any board member have a question or comment pertaining to this item? If not, you have before you a resolution approving the local policies and procedure manuals for the Henry County NSP program, and I will entertain a motion. Motion by Mr. Bowman. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Alletta. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. The next item is a resolution committing fund balance in accordance with GASB 54. Our presenter is Mike Bush again, Finance Director, Exhibit Number 12. Um, the GASB Board and the FASB Board have gotten together, and they're trying to create a financial um, uh, reporting procedure that compares, that makes it comparable to, to view a government and a, and a for-profit business type activity. And, and doing so, um, there's some terminology differences between the FASB and, and GASB. And one of those is what exactly fund balance is. Today, fund balance is either reserved or unreserved. And now they're going to go, instead of being reserved and unreserved, it's non-spendable, restricted, committed, assigned, unassigned. So they're just changing some terminology that we don't really have any choice in. But we do have two sets of monies. One is uh, our, our firefighter safety money that we basically have in, in a reserve status and fund balance until they get ready to use it the next year. That's kind of the boot money and grant monies that come in strictly to be used for fire prevention. That's why it's reserved versus an unreserved set of monies. It's about $36,000 and a $100 million budget, $120, $110 million budget. So it's not much of anything, but we have to commit that money. And all we're committing is any money that goes into that account. We don't have to set the dollar amount because we're not at the end of the year. But if we set if we set a commitment for this money, then it's going to be used that way when we actually collect it. And the same thing for our juvenile court program. There's some supervision fees and some other things that have to be used for specific purposes that's been basically set by this board in a previous time. So again, we'll commit those funds instead of having them in a reserved account, just in a committed account, which is basically the same thing, just different terminology. So we don't really have a choice, but these are the two things that we've got to do before June 30th to get a clean audit. So that's why we're here. Any questions or comments, Mr. Alletta? Uh, Mike, typically when you start having changes like this, your accounting software needs to be upgraded or modified or whatever. Yes, sir. Uh, are we in a position where our software at the present time will scale to this? We can absolutely add these uh, five accounts under our fund balance. Now, there will only be one with any, well, two of them. There'll be the one, the committed funds. We'll set up a line on called committed, and then we'll set up one called unassigned, which is basically unreserved. We'll change to unassigned. But yes, our software will handle this particular change in terminology. Okay, so it's more or less a line item versus a whole grouping of uh, accounts and, and uh, categories. Yes. Okay. Are there any other questions? If not, you have before you a resolution of the Henry County Board of Commissioners for the purpose of establishing fund balance policies as required by GASB 54, and I'll entertain a motion. Motion by Mr. Holder, second by Mr. Bowman. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. The next item is approval of the minutes for the May 16th and 17th regular meeting minutes and the May 31st called meeting minutes. Other than grammatical corrections, are there any additions that need to be made to those minutes? If not, I will entertain a motion for approval. Motion by Mr. Holder, second by Mr. Alletta. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. Did anyone sign up for public comment? Mr. County Manager, anything for public session? No, ma'am. Ms. County Attorney? No, ma'am. I need, at this time, we have no items for tomorrow's agenda, so I need a motion to cancel tomorrow's meeting. Motion by Mr. Bowman, second by Mr. Stamey. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. You noticed we had no hesitancy in getting a motion to cancel tomorrow night's meeting. The other upcoming meetings and events, of course, tomorrow's regular meeting has been canceled. Friday, July 1st, all county offices will be closed for a furlough day. Monday, July 4th, all county offices will be closed in observance of the Independence Day holiday. 
Tuesday, July 5th at 9 a.m., we have a regular board meeting. At this time, I need a motion to convene into executive session for the purposes of potential pending litigation, personnel, or land acquisition matters. So moved. Motion by Mr. Stamey, second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. I need a motion to reconvene into public session. Move. Motion by Mr. Bowman, second by Mr. Stamey. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. I need a motion for approval of an affidavit and resolution pertaining to executive session. Motion by Mr. Arletta, second by Mr. Holder. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. If there's no further business to come before the board, I need a motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Holmes, second by Mr. Holder. All in favor? Motion carries 5-0. We stand adjourned.